What's up, party animals? My name is Kezi, and I was gonna do a Q&A, like, um, over a month ago. Uh, I made a little community post about it, and I was supposed to do a Q&A. And guess who never did the Q&A? This dog. Now, I was super busy. I kept having a bunch of ideas, and I kept missing a bunch of weeks of videos. Um, because just events and life and just things, so really hectic. Uh, but this week I figured I'd finally get to it, um, answering your questions for 1,000 subscribers. Although I procrastinated so long, I'm halfway to 2,000 now. So thank you all so, so much. And let's start the Q&A. Did you go to college to learn music production or did you learn it yourself? How long did it take? I didn't go to school for music at all. Um, one of my biggest regrets was that I didn't go into something like band at school, um, but I've kind of learned that even if you don't go to school for music, you can learn music. Um, I learned everything I know pretty much online and from other musicians that I've met along the way. Uh, and I have been doing music for about five years probably now because I started when I was like 20 and I'm 25 now so yeah I would say about five years of music making um, and a lot of tutorials so hope that helps um, but I didn't go to school for music I'm thinking about doing so but I don't think of it as a necessity. I just think of it as I want to meet other musicians. What got you into poi spinning and what advice would you give to others? So I got into poi spinning fairly recently to when I actually had a bit of money um, and a ton of time to spend practicing, AKA COVID lockdowns. So I started basically towards the beginning of 2020. Um, I got the, so I, I my advice to beginners, if you can, don't cheap out because getting crappy poi with a crappy string sucks. I, I was spinning poi in the yard and all of a sudden the string broke and it went into a neighbor's yard. That sucked a lot. Um, and there's a guy on YouTube who does poi tutorials. Um, check out his like five more Poi, I'll, I'll link the video, but um, he has a thing where it's not the typical poi patterns, and I think it teaches you better fundamentals than just ooh -hoo -hoo, spinning it around. So, highly recommend strong poi in the video in the description. Maybe too basic of a question, but what is your gender and sexual identity? So, as far as gender goes, my uh, obviously I sound male, so I don't really care. But Kezi as a character, non-binary. They, them, doesn't have a gender because Kezi is a cartoon animal. Straight up, like no, you, you, you can't lewd Kezi at all because Kezi doesn't have lewdable parts. You know, I don't have anything under this tail, so you can't do anything to me because I don't have the parts for it. Now, me personally, I'm gender fluid, I guess, and my sexuality is bisexual. Um, a lot of people say bisexuality is trans exclusive. I don't agree with that. Um, I agree with I am, uh, I, I like people of my gender and I like people of other genders. So that's basically all of them. So yeah, if I like you, I'll probably date you. If you could teleport anywhere and bring anything, what would it be? I would go, so I once went to Hawaii, lots of pictures, go to my Twitter, um, and I would say I would go back to the beaches of Hawaii and I'd bring the Polyan Tracker. I love that thing. I'm probably gonna do a video about it, comparing it to the force of all things. So huge props to the tracker, love it and love bringing it places because it's just that you could really get some, it's a real workhorse, 
but it like it's inspiring too. So I feel like it's kind of a really good best of both worlds kind of thing. And with its portability, why not take it to the beach? How do you feel about Meep the Protogen Merp? Good or bad? Uh, who? What? Protogens are cool though. I do like Protogens. Worst and best con experiences. I've been to two conventions and they were both the worst and the best. Um, best con experience was Galactic Camp. Huge fun time. Fluke has some stuff about it as well as myself. Um, just, it was a blast. And my worst con experience was Furlandia, where someone tried to sell me lolly, which is illegal, which was bad. So, yikes. Do you ever plan on DJing at cons? Yes, I want to DJ at FurryCon so bad, but I need to actually spend some time DJing. I might have started as a DJ, so I know the basics, but I'm not good at DJing. Um, I'm way better at producing than I am at DJing, and so I need to actually get those hours in behind the decks before I can really kind of do that at a con. What's your favorite ice cream and frozen yogurt flavor? I love cake batter. If it has cake batter in it, it is good for me. I also like just straight cake batter, so I like raw food, I guess. Favorite movie or show? Um, I am always kind of liking whatever I watched last, and a couple nights ago I watched Loki on Disney+, Plus, and it was really good. Highly recommend. What's your advice for anyone who wants to be in the fandom, but is under severe restrictions? How do I encourage my parents to let me do that? Hard to say. Um, enjoy it as much as you can and don't do anything that would be, that would cause alarm. The furry fandom is a great place, a great wholesome place, a great safe for work place, but there is a dirty underbelly. Stay out of those places because they're not going to be something that's gonna make you or your parents happy. Enjoy the fandom for what it is as a vehicle of self-expression and self-exploration because that's what it's been for me and I think that's what it is for a lot of people. You know, getting into the furry fandom is no realistically no different than getting into something like Dungeons and Dragons or soccer, football, whatever. Like it's all, it's just a hobby and it's some way to meet people. And if your parents want you to make friends, they'll probably want you to have a hobby. What got you into EDM slash electronica? Uh, whew, I got into it like probably, but uh, you know, it's hard to say because I think a furry producer from way back named Lap Fox Tracks, now named something else, um, did, uh, had a lot of like weird furry electronic music and I was just like super vibing to it I thought it was the best thing in the world um, and a little bit before that even so it might have not been that but um, uh, Like my, a friend of mine listened to a lot of like UK rave music um, One of the songs I can remember is uh, Ravers in the UK which was probably one of the earliest songs I can remember listening to um, Maybe Darud Sandstorm for that matter but I listened to a lot of old rave music and I just vibed with it. Um, YouTube kind of helped with that because, well, you can get any music in the world. What is your opinion on metal music? Do you find it good or is it not for you? I love all music and I like metal. It's, you know, be because I have a selection of all the music in the entire world at my fingertips, I tend not to go for metal most of the time. I do like EDM a lot more. However, metal slaps. Anything I can headbang to is good in my book. Um, parents, both of my parents, mom and dad, were hella metal heads. They both, like, I remember growing up, uh, they'd find me a babysitter and they'd go to metal concerts. Like, headbanging, metal concerts, mosh pits, all of it. Like, see Metallica or that's the only one I can think of. But they would do that. That was their life. And that kind of spread to me because, you know, they're headbangers. Now I'm headbangers with a completely different genre. Have you ever been in a car accident? What was the worst? Um, I've been in one car accident and I flipped my car. Like it rolled into a ditch. And I remember climbing out of the driver's side window and somehow alive. Uh, wear your seatbelt. 
if I wasn't wearing my seatbelt, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Facts. Wear your seatbelt. It literally saved my life. Um, and don't go driving like an idiot. That was the thing I was doing was I was like, oh yeah, man, let's go drive around in my new car. And yeah, it's now in a ditch. Well, it's now in a junkyard, but it sucked and it's ruined my life. Um, because of that accident, Uber Eats won't let me give him a cheeseburger. So support me on Patreon because I can't get a part-time job. How long have I been a DJ? Longer than I've been a producer. I got into DJing probably my freshman year of high school, um, possibly even middle school. I remember getting like this little mixer. It basically just had a crossfader and two inputs. That was it and weird effects. Um, and I was super into laptops at this point, but like old laptops from the 90s. And so what I did was I had two old 90s laptops, both running Windows 95, and I had this like MS-DOS MP3 player application that I would do my DJing with. You could even slow down and speed up it with DOS commands, and so I would beat match with that. One of the craziest things I did, uh, I did it for like a church Halloween party back when I was a churchgoer, um, and it was awful, actually. Uh, I, it just it, it didn't work, but it really got me into like, man, I love DJing. So, uh, long time. I just, I, I've been DJing for so, so long. It's just, it's just a fundamental part of me. And I think that's it. Yeah, there's nothing else of the questions. Uh, thank you so, so much for supporting me. Again, Uber Eats won't hire me, so support me on Patreon if you can. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for 1,500 subscribers. That's an insane number. I just, it's it's hard to, to, to comprehend that that's actually like real. Um, so thank you all again. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.